Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we're going up to, Jer to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, what do you wish? She answered him, command that these two sons of mine sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, you do not know what you're asking. Can you drink the chalice that I'm going to drink they said to him, we can. He replied, my chalice you will dr indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the 10 heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be the, your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. you know the story of Jeremiah, he was a prophet before the Babylonian exile. He was enjoining the religious leaders to be faithful, to follow the precepts of God, and he was pretty much ignored. And therefore God allowed horrible things to happen. The Israelite people were in exile, Jeremiah was exiled, and it was in disarray for 70 years. Jesus comes along and he's telling the good news. He's healing the sick, helping people, preaching a message of loving God and loving your neighbor. But he was seen as a threat. He was upsetting the apple cart. And so the, the religious leaders, along with the secular leaders, got together to destroy him. It's amazing. I was talking to the children this morning and telling them about how we're all like animals. And dogs are among that group of people, <laughs> among that group of animal, right? And I explained to them that we think of dogs as domesticated, nice little pets, and they are, for the most part. I love dogs. But in the wild, they travel in packs. And in a pack of dogs, there's one leader of the pack. And that leader of the pack gets to be that leader through fear and tearing the other dogs to pieces, fighting for dominance. So then they have that leader of the pack who's there to protect the pack indeed, but usually through kind of animal power, right? Well, God, Jesus, is the head of our pack, and for our part, 
He doesn't tear us to pieces. He comes with a message of love and compassion. And yes, he does allow evil to sometimes oppress us, to crush us, to remind us how much we need him. But I'm sure he doesn't like that. The only reason why God allows anything evil to happen is because somehow in the economy of salvation, I firmly am convinced that it will lead more people to salvation. And that really is at, at the heart of our whole Christian life. We live in strange times. We see the world, sadly, seemingly, potentially on the brink of World War III. We need to keep our heads cool. Don't know, I, I didn't see this myself, but I understand our Holy Father is going to consecrate Russia to Our Lady on March 25th. It's not confirmed, but I heard that through a source. We'll confirm that later, but certainly that would be a good thing. Uh, sometimes God will reveal himself with great and miraculous deeds. And again, we don't know if these miracles happened or not, but who knows, there was an old icon I'm told somehow associated in a Russian barracks or something like that, an image of Our Lady, and on the wall the painting was weeping, weeping blood. It certainly would not surprise me if God would choose to reveal himself through his, who's through his mother in this miraculous way, but where does this lead us? It leads us to prayer. It leads us to trust. It leads us to do our best to help the world understand that they are loved by God, and that evil, by its very nature, is self-destructive. It doesn't, in the end, win. We know who wins. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we go forth this day, just let us certainly pray, not for any position of power, not for any prestige, but merely to serve the leader of our pack, to serve Jesus. I was telling the young children, I said, you know, people who are in charge and they have authority, it comes with a lot of headaches. It's not always the best thing necessarily. But we pray that if we find ourselves in a position of leadership, that we try and discern what is true, good, and beautiful. That we make our decisions rooted in what God would have us do and prayerfully discern, hopefully, to make those decisions in such a way. We all make mistakes, but through God's grace, hopefully, and we know through faith that he works through them and even can bring about greater things as the result of them. In the Easter Vigil, we hear that phrase in the old translation. I'm not sure how the new translation goes in the Exultet, but it says something to the effect, O necessary sin of Adam, which merited so great a redeemer for us. Now, this didn't mean that Adam and Eve had to sin, but it was because of their sin God revealed the depth of his love to us through Christ. Had they not fallen, we would not have understood the depth of God's love for us. It's an amazing thing. Let us pray that we can continue to enrich ourselves in understanding the richness of God's love and doing our best to share it with those around us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For Sylvester and Tessie Kaminsky, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. Indeed, we pray for an end to this wretched pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for peace in the Ukraine and for all those regions that aren't in the news, that all those people who suffer under tyrants and terrorists, that they be liberated from this darkness through the power of Christ. We pray to the Lord. That all corruption in our world be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power and be replaced by leaders who respect life religious liberty and all this in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are deceived and, and use 
the internet or other sources to try and corrupt or deceive that their plots may be uncovered and they may repent of that darkness and be open to all that is true, good, and beautiful. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.